well. Hello, welcome. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your grass not look like this. If you're working with stylized grass, chances are you're probably going to want your grass to look like it's sort of one big blob, like, uh, like the movies do, like animated Studio Ghibli movies. The grass is just one big sort of plane, except where there are little details and stuff. Now, a common trick that I've seen amongst the internet folks is to take a three vector, put it into the normal, make it a zero, zero, one, which is upward facing, and then to disable tangent space normals in here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And you're gonna find out that it just doesn't do what we want it to do, right? Over here, you can see the grass isn't blending with the landscape properly. And over here, you can see the grass also isn't blending with the landscape nicely. And so you just got a bunch of issues that, you know, from, from some angles looks perfect, you know, from here looks absolutely fine. But as soon as you have slopes in your landscape and shadows being cast across those slopes, like I have at sunset at the moment, you start to run into issues like this, whereas ideally, you want your grass to look more like this, don't you? You want it to be smooth along the landscape and then where the shadows are cast on the landscape from this hill, you want it to become shadowed, basically. Um, now, this doesn't just apply to cell shaded or even stylized grass. I think this is an issue among a lot of sort of grass styles. And it's with one, <laughs> one weird trick. Doctors hate him. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to troubleshoot what's going on here. So if we click this button up here, we go to buffer visualization. <laughs> buffer visualization. Sorry, I had a stroke. Buffer visualization. And we're going to go to world normal. Click that. Everything looks like 70s disco. And you can see straight away that the normals of the grass are not matching the normals of the landscape whatsoever. All of their little faces are pointing out in the direction that the, that the vertices actually face. If we then go ahead and apply our, you know, non-tangent space normals that are facing up, you can see there's still an issue. The landscape is facing out this way, like diagonally out this way but the grass's normals are all just pointing straight up into the stratosphere. And while it can look all right from some angles, it just isn't gonna cut it for what we're trying to achieve. So for context, this is what this one looked like. It was the one that was nice and flat, but it was still not shading properly. So if we go back and we get my grass, you'll see that my grass looks like cotton candy. The landscape underneath, it's normal, is facing out diagonal, and the grass matches that perfectly. And as a result of that, you know, we, we get actual shadows on one side rather than that sort of mess that we had before. So the first step to achieving this is going to be getting Blender. Blender's a free 3D modeling program. I'm sure that you probably have some experience with it. If you don't, this is going to be very comprehensive. I'm going to take you through every step, so you shouldn't really, uh, you shouldn't really get lost. All right, so we're in Blender. Uh, this is my grass mesh. First thing we're going to do with our grass mesh, we're going to copy it and we're going to paste it. And you're going to think, well, fuck, that just did nothing. But if you click it and move one, then you've got a, a duplicate. Um, we want them to both be overlaid perfectly on one another. So when you've got them overlaid, you're going to click it once, which will select one of them. Then up here in the top left corner, we're gonna click edit mode. Bammy wham. Uh, you're gonna click the number three on your keyboard. That's gonna go to face select mode. You're gonna hit A. Then you're gonna hit Alt N. And you're gonna flip the normals. Bam. If we actually go into this little tab here and go all the way down to this icon under the normals thing, the second icon from the left, Hit that. So this is the way that the normals are facing for each vertex of the mesh. So next thing we're gonna do, now that we've flipped the normals, is go back to object mode. We're gonna highlight select and just move it to make sure you've got both selected. Then we're gonna hit control J and that's gonna join them both together. So they, be they become the one mesh. 
Then we're going to go back into edit mode. So we're going to hit A to select all faces. Then we're going to go Alt N. And we're going to click point to target. And then just click anywhere after that. Now you can see all of our normals are facing straight into where we click. Where you clicked is irrelevant because down here... We are going to click this. And we're going to set the Z to 1 billion. Or 1 million. Or maybe 1 trillion. Doesn't really matter. Now you can see all of our normals are facing straight up now. Um, and the reason they're slanted is because my actual object has been rotated. So I'm just going to rotate mine this way. Cool, cool. <laughs> right. They're facing up now. They're facing straight up into the air. This is exactly what we want. And by duplicating the mesh, we've actually created a double-sided mesh. So the material, when we put it back in Unreal, we don't want it to be a double-sided uh, material. To export it, we're going to go back into object mode up the top left. We're going to click on our on our mesh. We're going to go file, export, FBX. And then we're going to click mesh and selected objects only. And then I'm going to call this uh, grass with double-sided upwards facing normals dot FBX. We're going to click export. Sick. All right. Back into Unreal. Fantastic. So now the only thing you have to keep in mind with this is that when you go to your landscape grass type, or maybe you're placing it manually with your foliage, it needs to be set down here, a line to surface. Now this is important because what it's kind of going to do is, um, because this is our grass, okay? And the normals are pointing straight up, right? Relative to the mesh. So if our landscape looks like this, and we've got some grass like this, and then some grass is like this, right? It's gonna be, it's gonna be sloped over. Its normals up here are gonna face like that. And then over here, they're gonna point out with the landscape. Perfectly with the landscape. And that's why this will look a lot better than having the, the forward-facing non-tangential normals. So after you've imported your grass mesh in and you've placed it on the landscape aligned to the surface, if you've done the no tangent normals thing, get rid of that 001 normal value. And having tangent space normals ticked or unticked doesn't actually matter at this point. And basically your grass should now be behaving a lot better and blending with the landscape properly. So one little issue that this brings up, it might not be much of an issue for you, but if you've ever looked at grass before, um, which I have the few times that I've gone outside, I've noticed that grass always grows upwards. It doesn't actually grow outwards if it's on a slope. So one thing that I actually did to combat this is in Blender, I actually made my grass a lot shorter. I, I scaled it down in the Z about like maybe a quarter of what it was before. So it looks really short and stubby basically, but the vertex paint is still the same. And then in my actual grass material, I apply a an upwards Z offset in the world position offset, which basically just stretches the grass upwards. So if we go back into paint for a sec, so basically if this was our grass beforehand, jutting out the side of the landscape, you know, like this, um, what is going to become of it is that it will grow out and then because of the vertex paint it will slope upwards slightly and it will look a lot more natural so that's completely optional if you don't mind your grass being diagonal um, then this isn't an issue at all for you uh, it might not even be noticeable depending on the style of your grass you're probably thinking charlie why did i need to duplicate the mesh in blender and flip the normals of, of one of them um, and I will show you what happens if you try and do this with a double-sided material um, instead of actually duplicating the faces of the mesh. This is white grass, um, but you can see, even though it's completely white, there are these huge, dark, ugly, you know, patches that just don't don't really play nice with the uh, with the overall look that we're going for. 
And if we jump into our world normal mode, you can see that the, the back faces of the mesh are like, like the opposite color of the front side of the mesh. So the landscape here is that nice cyan blue and the front sides of the mesh are also nice cyan blue, but the back sides of the grass mesh are like the complete opposite color. And you can see the same thing over here. We get, we get purple and green and, and uh, I don't even want to think about what those colors are. If you make a double-sided material, the normal is always the opposite of, you know, the other side naturally. So that's why we had to duplicate the mesh and have both sides pointing upwards so that it would look nice. <laughs> now, I'm not actually sure if a double-sided material, like internally, is extra vertices or if it's just another weird way of, you know, engines rendering double-sided faces and whatnot. So this might not actually be much more expensive than a double-sided material. And modern graphics hardware is like extremely, extremely good at rendering more vertices as opposed to more textures and stuff and more complex shaders and whatnot. Vertices are basically a walk in the park, which is why I can have, you know, millions and millions of verts on screen all at once and I'm still getting, you know, 120 FPS. Now there is one little other idea that I had and it might be cheaper, but at the same time, I think it might not be. It might depend on the uh, actual render distance of your grass. Um, and that idea was to get a runtime virtual texture of the landscape normal and then use that in the normal slot of the grass and have non-tangent normals and blah, blah, blah. And that way it would basically be copying the landscape's normal um, and applying that to the grass. So, you know, on this point, it's blue. On this point, it's purple. And the grass would match that perfectly and it would probably look the exact same. And that way you wouldn't have the, the diagonal grass problem, but you'd also be using another runtime virtual texture and rendering another texture in your grass material, which might not scale as well as this, but you know, that's all theoretical for now. I haven't actually tried it myself. It was just a little, a little thought that I had in the shower. All right, so now we're back with our newly found, beautiful, normal world landscape aligned grass normals. <laughs> it's a lot nicer. And I hope that this has, you know, fixed some issues for you if your grass wasn't blending very well. One little extra thing to note is that if you're using grass cards, so flat planes with a mask texture on it, in Blender, you'll have to flip the UVs of uh, the other side horizontally so that, you know, if the grass looks like this, then usually from the other side, it would then look like this, which isn't what you want. You want it to look like this. So that's just a little consideration to keep in mind. As always, if you need any help with Unreal, especially anything in my tutorials, you can join our Discord, which is in the Schneebelborp. It's full of super, super lovely people. We have some like professionals in there and a lot of indie devs as well. Uh, mostly focused on Unreal Engine, but we do have a lot of Blender gurus in there as well. So if you need a hand with anything or you want to share some of your own knowledge and your own progress on your projects, um, pop in, say hello, introduce yourself. Everyone is super, super friendly and very enthusiastic about solving your problems. So yeah, do that. If you want to find any more, you know, little tips and tricks and snippets like that, feel free to watch my devlog videos. I actually do a lot of less in-depth stuff, but there's more, more shit that I cover. And I also stream on Twitch uh, most days of the week, developing my game. And, you know, if you have any questions that you want answered in real time, um, with some visual explanations, then just drop into the stream, chuck some questions at me, I'll answer them while I do my work. And with that, I say goodbye. Bye. See ya. Bye.